Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known but then things change and you're down in the valley don't lose faith child you are never alone for the god of the He's still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right for the God of the good times. He's still God in the times the God of the day is still God in the night we talk of faith when we're up on that mountain but talk comes easy when life's at its best. But it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when faith is really put to the test for the god of the mountain is still god in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right for the God of the good times is still God here in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. The God of the day He's still my God in the night. Amen. Amen. John chapter 5 in the Word of God. John chapter number 5 in God's Holy Word. John chapter 5. Let's begin our reading in verse number 10, if you will. John chapter 5, verse number 10. Found your place where you stand with us. We give reverence to reading God's holy, holy word. John chapter 5, verse number 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured. This is a man that Jesus healed. He healed him on the Sabbath day. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. And he answered them, he that made me whole said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. I got to thinking, boy, that would be good for us to have been made whole to simply obey the words of Jesus Christ. Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was for Jesus conveyed himself away in a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, 
least the worst thing, come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had made rather done this thing on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these that ye, marvel, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead, and quickeneth them also, even, all, even so rather, even so, the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which, sent, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on me, that, and rather him that sent me, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Pray with us, church. Father, thank you for this hour to be in the house of God. We recognize, O oh God of heaven, on this day that we are nothing without you. We cannot do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And Father, we kneel before you and we ask of you now that you will give us that unction, O oh Lord, that unction to function for your praise and your glory. God, that unction that only comes from the Holy Spirit of God and give us the liberty to do everything pleasing to you. Lord, everyone that's in attendance now, I pray that their hearts have already been captivated by the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, their ears are leaning in to what thus saith the Lord. Father, we are praying that you will give the increase on this hour. God, again, we're asking that you use us however you see fit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Now, say by the way of introduction, church, uh, there are some disrespectful people in this world. There are some people that do not respect others. They do not honor others. They do not love people. They do not love their neighbor. And I have come to this conclusion in my life, Noah, is that the most disrespectful people on this side of eternity are religious people. It is people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of. There are people that profess to know God, but they have no relationship with God. God. Here we see this, that Jesus even talked about those that had the religion, but not the relationship. Jesus said they were people that are white as sepulchers. They painted up the outside. They look good, just like a coffin and right, rolls before you. That coffin, boy, there's some good looking caskets, right? I mean, boy, they're shiny and they're polished and they're painted and everything. But what's inside of that casket, nobody wants it. Amen. Right. That's what he's saying about a religious person. They look good on the outside, but nobody wants what's on the inside. Jesus even goes a little step further. He said they're like the blind leading the blind. Now, who wants to follow a blind man? Amen. Nobody wants to follow a blind man, but that is a religious crowd there. And he also said this about that religious crowd. They can talk a real good talk, but their walk is horrible. Matter of fact, Jesus said they'll tell you to do so many different things, and they won't even put a finger to the words that they have said that you are to be doing. And God forbid that any of us be religious. Amen. God forbid that we be religious and not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now I'm saying saying this because why? We are seeing this dishonor unravel before our very eyes. The Jews in the text here are being so disrespectful to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are seeing these religion people here hating Christ, 
to the degree that they wanted to snuff out his life. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never been hated that much, amen? I've never had somebody come after me with a gun, come after me with a knife, and wanted to end my life. Now, when I was a little child, my mama was whooping me. I thought she was about to end it then, but I'm not talking about that, church. I'm talking about somebody coming after you to kill you there. So we see here in the text the Jews just being very ugly, disrespectful, religious people. And why? Because Jesus healed a man. Think about this now. This was a man, Brother Tony, that had a disease and infirmity for 38 years. This man lived in pain for 38 years and then lo and behold, the master came, praise God. The Lord of Lords, hey, Jesus Christ, who's controlling every single thing, all he told that man was to rise up and take thy bed and walk, right? That man took Jesus at his words, hallelujah, and he was made whole. And then the Jews, the religious crowd, oh no, God did something. We don't want God doing anything. We don't want those miracles to take place there. Hey, why are you breaking our traditions? Here we get them. We see the Bible says they got mad at that man because he was healed. And he says, I'm telling you, I don't know who healed me. I can't tell you that right there. But I'm so grateful, praise God, that Jesus will let you know what he's done in your life. Amen. Jesus came to this man and here, lo and behold, he said, I'm the one that healed you. I made you whole. Go and sin no more. At least something worse comes upon you. Jesus Christ is telling us about that discipleship. Change your life. Amen. When God makes you whole, you better stop walking down the old way and start walking in the new way. Now, this man gets excited, all right? He said, now I know the one who healed me. Now I know the one who made me whole. Let me go tell the Jews because the Jews, they were just inquisitive about who, uh, who was the individual. And he said, this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was the one that healed me. And boy, their eyesight, boy, they honed him in right there like a bullseye. They looked on him through the scope there and said, all right, we're going to find this Jesus and we're going to kill him because he did something on the Sabbath day. Now, Jesus, again, hallelujah, I love this man. Listen to me, listen to me well. Jesus didn't back down from any fight. Amen. Hey, Jesus is the example for all men to follow after. So the Jews came against him and said, Hey, uh, why'd you do this on the Sabbath day? I can't believe that you would break the law in such a fashion. Now, I don't have time to talk about all this right here, but if you study that out, Jesus said the Sabbath was made not for man, not man for the Sabbath. Amen. That's what Jesus Christ said there. So in essence, the Sabbath was to help man out, not hinder man. Amen. The Lord Lord's day was created to be a blessing to you and I, not a burden. Amen. Hey, Jesus heals this man, does this wonderful work in this man's life, changes his life forever. The religious crowd gets all upset there, but Jesus wasn't razzled, not one bit at all. Jesus wasn't afraid about this one bit at all. And what I'm saying here today, church, is that we see all this has taken place and Christ rebukes them, he reproves them, and he tells them that all men should honor honor the Son. That's what Jesus Christ is saying here. He said, you're so disrespectful there. You're so full of hatred in your heart there. You're so full of pride that you've missed out on the blessings here of this man's life and many others that this man now is going to be able to be a blessing to. May I say this here? Here's the thought that I want to give to us this morning. And I want to preach on this if I can by the Lord's help. Honor the Son honor the Son. Now listen to this right here, beloved. All men, the Bible says, Jesus said this. I didn't make this up. Did I make that up? I didn't read that right. Hey, Jesus said... All men should honor the Son. As you honor the Father, then you should honor the Son. Now, this word honor, I like it. We are, some of you already said, well, preacher, I know what it means. Hallelujah, and I'm glad that you do. It means to revere, right? It means to respect, right? But it goes a little bit deeper than that, Brother William. You know what it means? It means to make a valuation. Not an evaluation, but a valuation. Uh -huh. And I know you're looking at me kind of strange. I know the same here, right? I'm used to that word evaluation, right? Some of you, you ever been under anything evaluation? You had evaluation? I know that, right? I know what that is. But valuation now, what that is, and some of you say, well, preacher, I know what that is as well. I know I need prayer right there. I need education. But I look this word up. Valuation, it simply means the analytical, analytical process that something goes through to determine its value. So you and I must make an analytical process in our hearts and our souls and our mind 
and see what Jesus Christ is worth. You've got to make that decision. I cannot tell you how valuable he is, but I can tell you how valuable he is to me. Amen. I cannot make your mind up and say, let me tell you how valuable Jesus is to me. That's your responsibility. And this is what Jesus is saying, that every single one of us must take note here. We must say, take that evaluation of Jesus here and see how much worth he is. So I ask you this question now. Have you done that this morning? Have you done that in your life? Have you determined how much worth Jesus is to you? Have you made that decision? I know how I'm going to honor him. I know how valuable he is. I know the respect and the reverence that Jesus Christ deserves and I've made up my mind. I'm going to give it to him. Can I say this here? Hey, Jesus, he is worthy and he's worthy to me. I want to honor the son. Some of the ways that you can honor the son. Number one, listen to him. Amen. Listen to the son. When you honor somebody, right, and you count them as being worthy, you count that individual to be esteemed high, you're going to listen to them. When they speak, you're going to listen to their words. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to grasp up there. Beloved, I'm going to say this here. The word of God has been read to you this morning. I wonder how many of you listened to it already. Amen. You listen to it there. Hey, when you love somebody, when you adore them and you honor them, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy to be listened to. May I say this as well? Jesus is worth being loved. Amen. Hey, he's worth being loved because why? There's no one like Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful, praise God, that he loves me. Amen. And he loved me first so I can love him in return. The love of God is unsearchable, it's unfathomable, but I'm so thankful that he loves me, amen. I'm grateful that he loves you right now, hallelujah. In spite of what you've done, in spite of the lifestyle that you live, he still loves you. He loves me as well, praise God. It's love I'm talking about, it's a wonderful thing now. He is worthy. He said, honor the son. Now say as well, is Jesus, have you made that determination? Is Jesus worthy? Is he worth listening to? Is Jesus worth listening to? Is Jesus worth loving? Is Jesus, is he worth laying down your life? Hallelujah. Hey, we live in a world that's full of so much disrespect, so much dishonoring. And boy, I know this right here. We look at our children and we'll say, oh, let me, I, I agree with you, preacher. Those young ones, boy, they're so disrespectful. They won't answer you correctly there. They won't talk to you with honor and so forth. But I'm talking about the disrespect that's being given to Jesus Christ. And my beloved, we're living in such a day that Christ Jesus is being put down. He's not being lifted up. He's not being esteemed high. But Jesus is being put down. Hey, we live in such a dishonoring world here and the time and the days that we're living in that Jesus Christ is being trotted on. He's being and put down by what? Self-justification. There are people that are justifying their lifestyle underneath the umbrella of religion, underneath the umbrella of saying, I know Jesus, but you know what? I don't have to live like the Bible tells me to live. That's dishonoring, amen. That is putting down the worth of Jesus Christ. Hey, that self-justification, it's all through the scriptures. Our Lord, he even told us about many times about that right there. He even gave the parable. He even gave it about those people that went to the Lord right there. The servants went to the Lord and he said, hey, I've got a job for you. But the servant said, wait a minute, you know what? I've got a, I got a, a field out here. It needs my plowing, right? Uh-huh. Oh, that, I've got these oxen. I need to try them. And then the other servant, what did he say? I just got married. I got to go home, take care of my wife. Oh boy. Amen. But nonetheless, I'm just telling you that self-justification. Man's good at that, of justifying their lifestyle and saying, I'm right in the sight of God, but you are contradicting the word of God. You know, by, uh, uh, Wyatt was reading his Bible the other day over there in John chapter one, right? John chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And chapter, uh, chapter one, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among men. Hey, when you read this Bible here, here, you're reading Jesus Christ, beloved. You are reading the words of God. You're reading the words of Jesus Christ. And if you are trying to justify your lifestyle in your sight there, you are dishonoring Christ. 
this self-justification. And I'll even go a step further since we're talking about the scriptures. And that's really taking, there's, there's another level that people are going of dishonoring Jesus is the sacrilege of the scripture. They are taking scripture out of context to justify their lifestyle, to justify who they are. And one thing that I hear so often, well, nobody's perfect. I agree with you on that. I say, amen, nobody is perfect. But if Christ said that we're to be such a person, we're to be sanctified, set apart, full of the Spirit of God, then we can, right? That's what he said, right? Jesus said it. We can be those individuals. Rather than going about and, and, and causing sacrilege to the Scriptures there, we are to be the individuals saying, well, that's what the Bible says. I agree with the Word of God. May I say this as well. There's so much dishonoring that's going on in our day, and the list can go on and on. Now, beloved, it, I'll say this here. In honoring Christ Jesus, in honoring the Son, the one thing that really honors Christ above all things is that you believe the gospel. Is that you believe the gospel. Jesus said this right here in verse number 24, and that is the gospel. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears what? My word. And believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come to condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Hallelujah, church. Hey, the Bible tells us over there about this thing of the gospel. What is it in a nutshell there? We do know the gospel. The definition of it is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But if I can take it to this next level for you to understand that the gospel, it is repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My beloved, you cannot be saved outside of repentance and faith. It's repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells you and I that we're to do that in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 21. To repent of your sins. Oh, I want you to hear me this morning. I want you to hear me very clearly. We live in a world that people are looking at themselves. They are pure in their own eyes. They are sinners. They are sinless individuals. They've never done anything wrong. They will never do anything wrong. Everybody else is wrong and I'm always right. Say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, 70% of the world, I believe today, see themselves as good people, as good individuals. The Bible says there's none good. No, not one. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've heard this said as well. Oh, preacher, you shouldn't be preaching on sin because people know that they're wicked and they're vile. They need to hear something good. Well, I'll tell you something good, hallelujah, that if you confess your sins, hallelujah, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, hallelujah. That's the good news, praise God. Hey, can I tell you of this thing of repentance? It's not a work. Repentance, it is a gift given from God repentance. You think you can choose and pray to repent whenever you want to, but I don't believe that, beloved. When you read in the Holy Word of God and you see those that repented of their sins, there's a process that takes place. And I'm not trying to make this complicated, but I'm just trying to make uh, uh, enlighten you, if I can, of how wonderful this thing is of the opportunity to repent of your sins. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible tells us here, in Acts chapter 5, and Peter and the other apostles answered and said in verse number 29, we ought to obey God rather than men and God our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hanged on the tree. Him hath God exalted at the right hand to be the prince and the savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That giving there is a word, this gift, hallelujah, is to give them the gift of repentance. In Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4, it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Repentance is this wonderful thing. When God God the Holy Ghost opens up your understanding. He opens up your eyes, the eyes of the soul there, and you realize you have broken the commandments of God. You sinned against God. You may have lied to your mama, you may have stole from your neighbor, but you sinned against God. God. Beloved, where's that gone today? I don't know, but I'm just telling you, it'll be a good day when you realize when you sin, you break the very commandments
commandments of God. And when you do that there, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit of God opens up your understanding who you have offended. You may have hurt somebody. You may have offended a mankind or something of this nature there. You may have broken the laws of the land, but you broke the very commandments of God. That is sin. And may I tell you, the Spirit of God opens up our understanding, and then that godly sorrow comes in. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, um, chapter 7 and verse number 10 talks about that godly sorrow work is repentance. And who you rightly offended, who you broke his heart, broke his law, you did it to God. Amen. You broke his word. And when you sin and trespass against God, I believe God will get a hold of your heart and you can't help it. Oh, beloved, I, I don't bank in all the tears, but I believe in this right here. When that heart is broken, you won't be able to hold them back. Amen. And when you realize who you sinned against there, the Holy Ghost has already opened up your understanding to the Word of God and your sorrow grips a hold of you right there. My beloved, that is an opportunity for you to do what? Repent of your sins. Say, so preacher, we'll prove that in the Word of God. I'm glad that you're wanting that proved. Amen. And you'll find out as well in Acts chapter 26, and I won't read it for a second time. You go back home and you read it. Here's the Apostle Paul. He's preaching them the gospel. He's telling them that your sins nailed Jesus to the cross, and you're the one that hung him there. But thanks be unto God, God rose him up from the dead. And who is he preaching to? He was preaching to King Agrippa. King Agrippa told Paul, he said, Almost persuadest thou me to be a Christian. In essence, what he said, almost, I was at that point. I about took that opportunity to repent of my sins, but nope, not today. Not today. I'm not going to repent of my sins because of what you said. I'm telling you, beloved, don't let this opportunity pass you by when God's dealing with your heart and the Spirit of God's falling upon you and convicting you of your evil ways. And for you to say, preacher, I'm not struggling with anything. I don't deal with sin there. There's an altar here before you. But I'm talking about you that have not repented of your sins because you're underneath the judgment of God, because the condemnation is weighing heavy upon you, because you're wrapped up in your religion. All you're doing, you're wrapped up in religion there and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus Christ. There's repentance. But now here it is. Believing. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. It is just that simple. But beloved, there's no other message that's more powerful than the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Christ. It's not having a mental record there. It's not having this knowledge here that you got a, a, a dot over here of, oh boy, I, I know Jesus died. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I, I know that he rose from the grave and I got that. And I, hey, I know these little things and these little nuggets of information. It's not all about having that knowledge of here. But that belief there is fully connecting it all together. And your soul is resting completely upon what Christ has done. Not what you believe but what he has done. See, there's a lot of things that people believe but don't believe what Jesus has done. See, we must trust in Christ and Christ alone. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you a little step, step further. There's a lot of people that believe in their Jesus and not the Jesus of the Bible. My beloved, if you're believing in some belief that you made up in your own mind and it's not what thus saith the Lord, you better make your call and election sure. Hey, the gospel here is the good news that God sent His only begotten Son who is holy. Beloved, if I could jump up right now, I sure would. But I'm just telling you, hallelujah, He is holy. Oh, John Baptist, he did not get it wrong. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And God sent Jesus to do what? Die on the cross. You offended God. You broke his law. So did I. All have come sin uh, short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And we nailed Jesus Christ to the cross by our sins. This is the gospel. And I'm telling you this here today, that we nailed him to the cross. And by, I say this is by the body of Jesus Christ suffered so much while he was up there. He went through so much pain and so much torment and so much grief. For who? For you and for me. That's who he did it for. May I say as well what took place in the gospel is that Christ Jesus died on the cross. His blood came forth of his body. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. 
Without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no forgiveness. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're still, wretched, you're still wretched, you're still vile, you're still underneath condemnation. But the blood, hallelujah, what did the blood do? Well, when Jesus rose up on that third day, hallelujah, and he came up from the grave, amen. Hey, Jesus came up from the grave and he presented his body, he presented his blood unto the Father. When Jesus rose up from the grave, hallelujah, what did he do, preacher? He made a way that all can come unto the Father. Father. He did say it himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man come to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. That's what he did, church, and this is the gospel here. The good news. Repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't know if that's got you excited, but it surely does on me on the inside. Hallelujah. As beloved, I'm going to tell you this here. Jesus is to be honored. Honor the Son. Repent of your sins and trust in Him. Turn from your wicked ways and trust in Jesus Christ. Quit living what this world has to offer. Quit indulging the things that the devil of this world wants you to be engaged in. Quit going out there and sending it up there and give your life to Jesus Christ. Here today, right now, there's some of you, you know you need to be forgiven of your sins. I've got good news, he will forgive you. But don't let this opportunity pass you by. See, to act like you don't struggle with things, my beloved, I'm sorry, we all do. Hey, this altar is open. He will forgive you. Don't let the opportunity pass you by. For you that's just got that religion and you don't know nothing about being delivered, you don't know nothing about the blood of Jesus Christ being part, uh, placed upon your heart and cleansing your mind and ridding you of guilt there and giving you a peace that passes all understanding, you can have that this morning. See, there's many that's made professions but they don't have the possession. There's many that's made a prayer. And boy, you're hanging on to that prayer. You're not believing in the person. There's some of you, you need to come today and be delivered, be born again. See, there's so many people, just like the Jews, that are mad. Oh, preacher, I used to like it when it was this way. Oh, preacher, I can't believe that things have changed and I wanted to go back to the old ways. Beloved, when God does a work and He's moving and He's saving and He's changing, who am I, who are you to tell God, no, that's not the right way to do things. Amen. Oh, I'm trying to help now, I promise you. Believe the gospel. Beloved, the Bible tells us this here, and I'm wrapping it up and I'm done, believe it or not. I say, preacher, I can't believe it. Well, hallelujah to that. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter number 2, in verse number 8, said, being, fashion, being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Beloved, I've I, 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 I got to say this again. The Son of God, God in the flesh, he did nothing wrong. The Jews sought to kill him for doing something good. They still sought to kill him because they were messing up his, their religion. They nailed him to the cross but your sins did as well. And he did that willingly because I told you at the beginning of the great love that he has for you. Oh, beloved, I ask you again, are you listening to the words of Jesus Christ? Are you listening to him? Do you love him? Are you laying down your life for Christ? Honor the Son. Being found fashioned of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, the God of heaven, the God of the universe, exalted his son Jesus Christ, and has given him a name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and that are under heaven, and uh, things that are under earth, and things that are uh, uh, yeah, in the earth and under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. That's exactly what John was saying right there in, you know, in the Word of God what Jesus was saying. If you honor the Son, you're going to honor the Father. Are you honoring Jesus is what I'm asking you this morning. Have you counted Him worthy? Beloved, your valuation of Jesus Christ needs to be made today. Your valuation of Christ don't look at your neighbor and say, well, preacher, they're not honoring Jesus by the life that they're living. This is your life we're talking about, not nobody else's. Amen. Not anyone else, yours. What's your valuation of Christ? How much time are you spending with Him? What are you giving to Christ? What are you holding back? Beloved, when you love someone, 
And boy, you see them higher than anybody else. That's what God said. I've given his, the na him a name that's above all names. That includes your name. Above my name, anyone else's name. Church, I remind you, if anybody else is lifted up higher than the name of Jesus Christ, then the star has gone out in this church. And I'm telling you, it's the same way in your life. When you exalt something else higher than Jesus Christ, when you exhibit anything, you brag on anything else, you give to anything else more than you give to the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're not honoring Him. So preacher being mean. No. I'm telling you now. He has been given a name. Honor the Son. Christ said you should do that. Beloved, I want to tell you this right here. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the best thing that's ever happened to me. He is the sinner's Savior. Amen. I'm not the sinner's Savior. You're not the sinner's Savior. Jesus is. Praise God. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He's the one to be honored. He's the one to be exalted. Praise God. Hey, can I even say this as well? Hey, Jesus Christ, He is the peace giver. Amen. Aren't you grateful for that? Praise God. I'm so grateful as well. He's the way maker. Hallelujah. No matter what comes my way, no matter what's going to happen in my life, I'm so glad that God makes the way. Hallelujah. Can I even let you know this is well, I'm thankful that when I am in the valley, He is the lily of my valley. Praise God. Hey, when I'm on the mountaintop, praise God. He's still the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this here of how wonderful Jesus Christ and He is to me that I value Him more than the fairest of thousands of thousands. That's not like Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that I know Him. Amen. Amen. Do you esteem Him higher than all of the things of this world? Do you esteem him the highest? Oh, preacher, I do. I do esteem him. But I've got these things I've got to take care of. Oh, preacher, I esteem him so highly. But you know, give him my all. I'll wait. I've got these couple things that I want to do. And then I'm going to give him my all. You may not have tomorrow to give him your all. You know I'm not lying to you. And I'm not trying to twist your arm. I'm just telling you, if you don't see him worthy... If you don't see him to be honored for you to give your all, it makes me question where if you gave him your all when you asked him to be saved. Amen. Beloved, he's worthy. And I'm trying to hurry, I promise you, to be disrespectful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some pain him, oh, believe whatever Jesus you want to believe. That's your Jesus, preacher. Oh, I'm giving you the Jesus of the Bible. And we're only scratching the surface of the Jesus of the Bible. I promise you, he's not a pushover. Some want to say that he is. He's not. He's the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hey, can I say this as well? He's not a genie in your bottle. Oh, no, that you rub the lamp right there and say, poof, he comes out at your beck and call. That's not Jesus Christ. You don't treat him that way. He's honored. He's to be honored. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I mean, I say this as well. Some want to paint him as being so needy. Oh, Jesus needs you. He's begging you to come to him. Oh, beloved, we're the ones to be begging him. The same one that told you, that told me, that we should what? Honor Him. Is the same one that God, what did it say the verse before that? And this, I'm done, I promise you. This is it. This is it. Here's your opportunity. The verse before that right there, it's in verse number 4, 24. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words, right? And that believeth on me. I'm sorry, verse number 23. He said, You should honor the Son. Verse number 22, the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto who? The Son. The same one that you should honor is the same one that you're going to stand before. Beloved, there's a reason why when we go to a courtroom here on earth that we call them your honor. Mm. And it's a shame where some of you, hey, it's a shame where some of you Reverence a man more than you're reverencing God. You're esteeming a man because he's got a black robe on. You're trembling at his sight. You're not honoring Jesus. You're lifting up a man more. It's the reason why. Every single person, no matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter how wealthy or poor you are, how smart you are, no matter what you've done in life, all men will stand before Christ. He's the judge. God has deemed it so that he's going to judge everybody. And my beloved, I'm going to say this here as well. The same one that told you to honor him 
It's the same one that's going to be judging you. And Christ Jesus knows who you are. His eyes are full of fire. You're not going to get anything past him, I promise you. See, you don't need to live your life to please a preacher. You don't need to live your life to please mom and daddy. You need to live your life to please God Almighty. Amen. You need to honor the Son. Jesus knows this if it's all talk. <laughs> hey, <laughs> boy, I'm telling you now, there's a lot of talk. Mm, just like old Jews. They love to talk. But not much walking. May I say this? The same one that knows you, the same one that said, honor him, the same one said, I will judge you, he will either say two things to you. Depart from me. Sentence you to hell forever. Or he'll say, enter thou. Why doesn't that grip the heart of individuals anymore? I do not know. But yet they'll be afraid because they can't pay their bills. Yet they'll be afraid because cancers come their way. But yet when those fearful words are heard, depart from me. Oh, well, you know, you're just saying that to scare people. And that's what Jesus said, beloved. Not my words. The sentence that he gives to you, what's it going to be? What is Jesus going to say to you? Can you answer that this morning? What is he going to say to you? You honored me. Enter in to thy rest, or you dishonored me. Now I've got a place called hell for you. You did not trust in me. You did not repent. Turn from your wicked ways and trust in my death, my burial, my resurrection. You're not holding on to it completely and hoping in me. No. You were holding on to your religion, trusting in your ways, trusting in your mind, and you dishonored me. What's he going to say? Beloved, I hope that every single one of us can say he's going to tell us, enter in. But I believe there's some in our midst that you need to come today. Repent of your sins. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's some of you, you've done that and you know that you're not living right. Oh yes, preacher, what gives you that ability to say that? Not me, but God tells you so. Amen. And you know that you're not doing right by God. Here's the opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Here's the opportunity. What will the judge say to you on that day? What would Jesus say to you on that day? I hope it's good news. I hope it's not bad. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you've taken our feeble words that's been said at this hour and the honesty and the transparent that is needed right here now. God, it's your people. I pray there'll be no one in our midst. Lord, there won't be like King Agrippa. And say, you know what, Jason, almost thou persuadest me. And they leave lost. Almost thou persuadest me. And they leave in their sinful condition. Almost thou persuadest me to lay everything down and give my life over to Jesus Christ and be a servant of the King. My God, I pray that there's no one in our midst like that now. But if there is, God, there are those that are struggling, those, oh God, that need help and deliverance. Lord, those, oh Lord, that need to honor you, live for you like they're supposed to, Lord Jesus. Here and now, may they come. May they come and find place with you and Almighty God, who is full of grace, who is full of mercy. God, you'll help, you'll strengthen, you'll forgive, you'll forgive whosoever. My God, I pray that you do that right now. Bless, we pray. Move, we ask. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. You'll stand to your feet, please.